Uh, hey everyone, uh, welcome to our second meetup here at Static Web Tech Meetup here at Wikias HQ, our first. Thanks so much for sponsoring us, guys. Um, I just want to quickly remind everyone that the October 26th, we're having um, uh, Parker Moore, who was the prime maintainer of Jekyll, uh, come and introduce Jekyll 3.0. So that'll be really exciting as well. Uh, right, so today it's all about WordPress and how to migrate from WordPress to middleman. And to talk about his own personal experience in that regard, we have James Stone, who's uh, both an author, video blogger, blogger, evangelist, developer, and much more. So without further ado, I give you James Stone. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is James Stone. And today I'm going to talk about my migration from WordPress to middleman. I'm hoping actually to talk very little about WordPress, but I'll maybe talk about some of the issues that I had with it. And these are just some of the lessons that I learned. Basically, about two years ago, I migrated over, and um, I haven't gone back yet. So, so just a little bit about me. Um, I do front-end development, and I'm almost purely focused on Zurb Foundation, which is a front-end framework. I'm author, blogger, vlogger. And so having a blog and having it be stable and performant is actually really critical for my business, right? And so... I guess this all started, I had a WordPress site and I used to be an avid reader of Hacker News and I, I came up with this, I, I really wanted to know how do you survive the Hacker News front page, right? Because I would watch constantly as people didn't survive, right? And I knew for sure WordPress usually wouldn't cut it because I watched WordPress sites go down like almost like instantaneously, right? And I also saw like a lot of Heroku Rails apps. They were like, oh no, we fired up, we fired up tons of uh, dinos, like go back. But by then, you know, you're already off the homepage and, and all that kind of enthusiasm for whatever it was that you were promoting, it kind of died. And so, you know, people chat like it's back up and you'll see all this like slew of comments and then you go check it out because I'm kind of curious, I'll keep that stuff up because I'm like, I, I want to see what it is. But I think in general, probably you're not going to get the bulk of the traffic. And so for me, the question was like, how do you survive as a blogger? Because I wasn't building an app. I didn't really have an app in mind that I was gonna try and get on Hacker News. And I haven't been on Hacker News, but the goal is just to survive the impact of some sort of event that would drive that kind of traffic. And at the time, and this is a couple years ago, I kind of estimated, and I don't know where I got this information, but probably from just people talking about things. But I had an idea that it probably is gonna send about 6,000 unique users in about an hour and they might do weird stuff to your site. And I figured if they sit about a minute on average, that's like 100 concurrent users minimum. And I think that's pretty much gonna take down most shared WordPress type installations. And not only that, but I, I also believe that there's probably a large spike at the beginning that's gonna kill it even further. And so <laughs> I got really interested in performance at this time and I was trying to get my own server to be able to perform in such a way that I could just get WordPress to withstand this, this kind of impact, right? And so I started testing um, with Apache Bench, and it basically load tests your Apache or whatever web server you have. And I was really interested in how many sustained concurrent uh, users I could get where I wasn't going to start losing performance, because I didn't think it was a good deal if you get on Hacker News and the speed just plummets. I think that's just as bad as it not showing up. And so I started testing um, static generated WordPress pages. So basically a copy of my blog versus like a WP, I think it's called super cache enabled WordPress site, which is supposed to be pretty much as fast as it gets, right? Without doing too much other crazy stuff, exact same content. And I found it, well, I'll, I'll get into that. But, but basically, I started doing all these tricks, right? So Apache, you start using Nginx, you start optimizing it, and you can get a lot more performance out of a kind of a low-end VM, which I was using a 512 meg Ubuntu-based server. It was like the smallest one. I came from Slicehost, so I was migrated over. And so I was interested in small server, how much performance could I get out of it? And so what I found is that even like the simple PHP scripts like uh, WordPress ran about six to 12 times slower from, I don't have the statistics exactly to tell you, but this is my recollection. And it was a pretty big performance bottleneck for me. And pretty much it was almost exactly that same ratio for like these 
you know, large concurrent sessions. And so it would impact the server in a similar kind of way. So I'd start to get this server degradation in kind of a similar six to, six to 12 times ratio, even with that really optimized WordPress site. So I didn't really feel confident unless I was gonna get this huge server to host my WordPress site or try and frantically scale it up, which I didn't think was a great solution because you would have to know in advance that you're gonna end up on the front page, which sometimes people know, sometimes people don't. All right, so this, this kind of uh, took me into static site generators, which I was pretty excited about at the time. And the first one I looked at was called Octopress, and it's pretty much like a WordPress clone in Ruby. I don't know, has anyone used Octopress or created Octopress site? Yeah, awesome. So it, it makes the process really easy. They've got scripts to output your WordPress XML. So you basically export all of your WordPress sites so you don't lose anything, which is great. Because I had built up a lot of content, I didn't want to lose anything. And, and basically it sets up like a WordPress looking site, but it's all static and it generates all the pages and you can host it pretty much anywhere. But the thing I didn't like about it, because I'm a front-end developer and I work in foundation, and I want to do a lot of customization. So for me, it doesn't quite cut it just to have like a normal theme, right? I don't want to just have like a prefab theme and just throw it up there. I want to create my own custom thing. Yes? Isn't it possible to change out the CSS or is it all? It's possible to change the CSS in Octopress. And so I actually spent a lot of time creating themes for Octopress. Um, kind of based on their own themes. But in my own personal opinion, they had way too many partials. They got too granular with the way it worked. And so you were really stuck with their blogging style structure. So if you wanted to make radical changes to the way it was being displayed, all the content, it was very difficult. I think things like CSS style changes are fairly simple to do. And often what I ended up with was just something that looked like these prefab themes. There's like four or five of them. I'm sure we've all seen them um, because they all look the same. And so I thought the themes were not great. They had kind of this like prefab theme look and I wanted to go beyond that. And so it kind of led me to discover Middleman, which I found to be much, much more flexible. It didn't have this granularity with the, um, with the themes or the templates and I had a really fluid structure that I could change. So as a front end dev, I was looking for something I could just link to my CSS files, link to my JavaScript, kind of do everything myself because I know how that works and how I understand how all that's going to look in the end product. I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to understand some complex blogging system just to kind of restyle it. And also, I was working a lot with Ruby, Ruby on Rails at the time, so I loved that it was Ruby-based, that it had the Sprockets asset pipeline, which really streamlined things for me as well. So it made things really performant in production without much work. Also worked great with Zurb Foundation. In fact, they had some themes, I think, that were good starter themes, although I ended up creating my own. And I could basically create anything I wanted really fast. That was kind of my discovery with it. And so, that's just kind of an introduce, introduction to the problem that I had, and my solution was Middleman. And I still use Middleman today for my blog, and so I thought we might go back to Saturday, November 23rd, 2013, with the power of Git, and we'll take a look at my old blog. It's not the absolute beginning of when I went to Middleman, but it's pretty early. And so we could look at like how I approached things back then, and then I could talk about some of the problems I've been solving and how I'm approaching them like in my modern blog that I have today. So I have an alias bundle exec middleman as I type it all day long. All right, so what I liked about this at the time, and remember we're back a couple years, former self. So, hello, short-haired James. And uh, it was also, you know, from a marketing perspective, like very self-focused. This is me and all the stuff I love to do, and let me tell you about what I'm doing. I've since been more audience-focused and kind of 
focused and what people want to learn, which has kind of been a big shift. But what I liked about it is I was able to, you know, I work with foundation, kind of use their colors, build my own theme that looked custom, and it didn't look to me like the Octopress default blocks. So these are um, articles that I never published, right? So in Middleman, you can hide your publish, but we're looking locally. But this is kind of how the articles would look two years ago. And you notice my domain, themanofstone.com, has changed. Yeah, just, I mean, it's just, I think it's a very simple blog, and I was kind of interested to have my own style, and I had spent some time kind of customizing the UX with it. Here I am promoting, right, trying to capture email addresses and discus comments. Probably the first thing people do when they come to my site, since it's mobile responsive stuff, they'll be like this kind of thing, right? Sometimes I run mouse flow and check, and everyone's checking to make sure I'm actually practicing what I preached. So there. So I think um, Middleman's a pretty good project, and they have some documentation about how to build a basic blog. But a lot of other things I had to kind of dig out of Git issues and other things, right? So we're going to kind of flip through and see what kind of customization I've done. So the big thing was, and you'll see I'm even using bourbon. I don't know. I, I was like, yes, I'm going to mix bourbon with foundation. It's going to be amazing, right? It's kind of an early thought. But um, this is when foundation first went to using Bower. And so basically, I set up uh, Sprocket so that I'm importing the correct uh, SCSS or SAS directories. So I don't have to worry about linking to them directly, you know, or having these crazy um, files, right? So this is what my app.scss, so in foundation, this is kind of the default. And you'll just see a, kind of all of my imports here. You'll see I've commented some of them out to get a little bit more performance. But these are all coming out of Bower. And so I was living in Paris at the time, so I could set the time zone, which was important for me, because otherwise, if I had it set to some other time zone, it was super confusing for a while. So it was useful. I could send something out at 11 p.m. and set that exact time, and I knew that that was 11 p.m. in Paris, where I was living. So it was useful for that. I created my own split summary view, right, which is nice. You can kind of very quickly get a kind of quick prefab summary of your blog articles just by inserting this token. I'll open one of those up. So you see, I'm using it right here. And so what I can do then is on like the main blog roll page, then I can kind of just quickly grab that top summary. And What's really nice about Middleman is I can kind of define all of these different types of layouts. It's very customizable. Like I think in Octopress, often it was like a blog. I can really change too many things. But here, I could create new pages on the fly. I could change the layouts. So if I wanted to not load certain things, or like in this case, I didn't want to have partials like for the header and footer on landing pages, because you know typically you don't want to have a landing page and have someone go to it and have them get lost by navigating your site. So it was very useful for that. And so you can do that page and just by setting the layout. You can also do this in the YAML as well. And I'd kind of changed, you know, the markdown engine using fence code blocks, all this kind of stuff. And if you can see back in time, I was experimenting with S3, which I didn't have a really great experience with, and I can explain why. But I thought this is going to be so fast, you know, S3, CloudFront, I'm going to host my blog. But the problem was, is it would kind of time out. And so when I would hit the page, it was actually very, very slow, unless I had accessed it very recently. And so I didn't think it was a very good user experience. I don't know if that's changed since then. 
All right, and you'll see I don't have my password here, which is a good thing. Very cool. And so, I mean, the way all of this works is in middleman, you have this config RB, you can kind of set some general settings, right, for your layouts and the way the blog's working, configure plugins. And then basically you can use ERB, which is a Ruby um, template file, or you can use Slim, which I've used as well. You can use pretty much any kind of Ruby-based template file you want inside of Middleman. And then all of my pages, I would just create a new template for those. So YAML front matter at the top, and you'll see that I've added things for SEO description, right, the title of the page, because as a blogger, I was really like it's very important for me to get those right. They're like really critical that your site's displaying correctly. And I didn't see that middleman had them really built in. So I kind of wrote my own way to handle those things. So maybe I'll start with the layout, right? This is like the, it's gonna look like a lot of boilerplate from foundation, but I can kind of show you how I approached with those variables. It's probably a better way to do this, but basically I'm just creating a variable and testing to see if the YAML variable exists, because otherwise I would get all sorts of errors when it would run through its script. And so that was my solution at the time to create a variable, see if it is defined, and then if it was, I would basically apply that description. Otherwise I would omit it. And so you're gonna see I use the same kind of terrible technique probably even today. Um, but what was really great for me was the fact that I could use these partials, like the partial header, the yield, the footer, and then I could very easily have this JavaScript include tag application. I could set the defer attribute on it, and then it would already kind of compile all of my JavaScript into a single file, right? And using standard kind of sprockets includes, right, with the slash slash equals require. So these are all my foundation, right? JavaScript files. I was also using highlight library, uh, processing JS library, time ago. And then I can kind of have my own very minimal JavaScript. And I just didn't find this is easy to kind of work with. And I think also coming from like a Rails background, I'm like, this looked exactly like what I was doing with Rails. And so it was very easy to work with. All right, so I don't think I was doing anything fancy there, but if you can imagine very quickly, like with WordPress, it, has anyone here used WordPress before? It's okay, you don't have to be ashamed. We've, we've all been there at one point, right? So um, I always recommend to people who are new with blogging, WordPress is a good way to get started. And I think it gives you a really good out if you wanna go into something that's static because you can export all of your posts and all of your data and images and things. And so even in WordPress, there's things like featured images that don't come for free in all templates. It's getting better and like SEO descriptions. So you end up adding like all these plugins to take care of all of that. So in Middleman, you don't really have all of these plugins. There's a couple, but what I ended up doing was just kind of writing everything myself, which I actually didn't find that time consuming at all. So. This is an example of a blog post. You know, we've got a title, a date, uh, the time, and one, one thing that's kind of a gotcha with this is make sure your date exactly matches the date in the file or it'll throw an error and break your build. So be careful with that. Um, but I added things like tags, categories. I had this sign up zerb true. That was basically for my, it was like a flag if I wanted to kind of show that, you know, subscribe to my email list at the bottom of that particular article because I didn't want it to be on articles that weren't relevant at the time. And then I have a, a featured image, right? Because I wanted to have images like in the blog role. I wanted to have an image at the top of the blog post. I thought a blog's pretty lame without any images at all. <laughs> so, but that's kind of how it comes, right? The default middleman blogging, you know, is it a plugin or a library? But yeah. And so I'll jump into the blog layout that I created. And so basically what I'm doing is this kind of like a sub layout, I guess you might say, of the normal layout. And I'm just wrapping it with the, the default layout that I had just shown. 
And then this is all a bunch of Zurb Foundation stuff that deals with grids and whatnot. But you'll see again, I've got this written by James Stone. I've, I'm pulling in some data, right? I'm parsing it into the correct format <laughs> in Ruby, right? Because it's not <laughs> really ready to go. And I wanted to use the standard one that came with, with, uh, with middleman. And so I have all this stuff where I'm parsing with Ruby and basically getting the date into the correct fa time format that I then in JavaScript change into like two months ago, three months ago, later. And so as we go down the page, you'll see here, I'm basically testing again to see if that variable is defined, to see if there's a featured image. And if there is, I'm just showing it. So it, a lot of it's just kind of like I added a bunch of YAML. And if that variable was there, then I would kind of show something or show a block of code. So it's pretty simple logic. It's not really very difficult to do. And here again, I'm showing a partial, like if I want to show the sign up form. And I've got a bunch of stuff for Discus. Nothing really that exciting. So maybe I'll talk about some of the problems that I experienced as a blogger, because obviously I think the pain point for me was at some point I love the performance of static and I love how it works, but I was like, I really wanted to do some things on my blog and I, I felt like I should go back to WordPress because I know there's some plugin that would do it automatically with no effort, but I resisted the urge to do that. And so instead I looked for other solutions. <laughs> All right, so fast forward to September 10th. We'll take a look at how things have changed. And, and one thing I really like about this, I've worked with WordPress themes as well. When you really wanna change things radically or incrementally, I found it not to be as intuitive. But with Middleman, it's been very easy because I have just a couple of files and partials and I can just like really change things I wouldn't do it on a daily basis, but if I have an idea, I can really kind of try it out right away. So here's my blog today as it's facing the world, I believe on the master branch. And um, I've, I host my site with, um, with Bitballoon. It's really great. I just do a git master origin push and then it rebuilds the site and publishes it automatically. So I don't even have to think about it. It's really fantastic stuff. Um, before I was, you know, doing all sorts of other things with S3 and then, you know, making sure that it was working correctly. But I've changed, right? It's, you know, the look of it is quite a bit different. It's still Zurb Foundation uh, and I'm, I'm promoting different things. And this is just the home page. I've kind of built things out because I have a lot more content than I had before. So, um, one of the things I did is I kind of did an um, audit of my site and I looked at, well, what are people doing? What are the metrics I wanna check? What are the things, like, where do I wanna go with that? And then I started to do an analysis of a bunch of other popular blogs and tech areas, blogs that are similar to mine, and tried to see, well, what are the things that people are doing? And what I noticed with my older blog was I was really good, I think, at providing value um, in that I would write articles that were of interest to my audience and they would come there and they would read it and get down to the bottom and maybe half a percent of them, if at all, would comment and the rest would kind of leave, right? So I started to think about, well, what are the things that are other blogs doing and how can I increase engagement on the site? And so a couple of things I thought is one, it seemed like every blog was trying to give you somewhere else to go. Like they made it really like simple for you. Like you get to the end of the article, you're reading something, they want to make it really easy for you to discover other content, right? So I started to add tags. I started to kind of group things in a way that made more sense for people looking on my site. I tried to be more visual and I'll show you an article as an example. I started to add things like highlights so you could get a really quick view. I watch people reading the site and what I found is most people when they view the page, they're not like kind of slowly scanning like I am, they're actually just like rapidly just like flying through the site and like, you know, they're going all the way down and they're maybe going back and then they're maybe reading a couple things. And so it really changed the way I thought about 
the blog and what I was writing and, and how to kind of approach those things. But I still wanted to stick with the featured image. I added things like article highlights. I tried to make it easy for people to follow me on Twitter, which is really the only social media network that I participate in because I found the other ones to be ineffective. And I added things like you've seen these on WordPress blogs to try and make it easy for people to engage and retweet little comments from it. And this is just a partial that I created where I pass a variable into. I'll show you in just a minute. And as so we get down to the bottom, this was kind of like one of the big things that I've done. And I'm still not happy with the way that it works. And I found a plugin that you can use for um, Middleman that will kind of just like parse all of your articles and suggest some by some algorithm. But I think the algorithm is not working so well, at least with my content. So I'll probably revamp that and I might have it more of a manual process. So I added this related articles and topics, right? Opinion and marketing. Basically just to try and increase engagement. And I did see a small lift after I added some of these features. So I think it is effective in getting people to read more on the site and kind of engage more with what I'm writing. And I've got the discus comments and that's about it, right? So let's take a look at how this is working. All right. So what kind of stuff is new? Roll bar is new, right? You gotta know if you're getting weird JavaScript errors. And you'll see I started to add a bunch of favicons, verification, and SEO description is similar. I'm running Pingdom to see what kind of performance I'm getting, which is a really great tool. So now I've got this like sub nav and I can show you an article example of this. I'm probably gonna get rid of it because it doesn't work well. But I also had this great idea that I would make the articles um, easier to navigate. So I noticed people are like scanning, 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 right? I'm like, well, maybe I'll make it easier for them. I don't know if it was the best decision. I think this one has an example. So I added this sticky nav on the top, right? And this is just standard YAML stuff too. So you could kind of like quickly click on something and go right there. I, I don't know if it's particularly useful, but there are people that click on it. <laughs> I can verify that. So, so what's nice about middleman, like I think if I was using WordPress, I might look for somebody else's idea and try and kind of shoehorn it into my blog and it may or may not fit well. But here I can like try out ideas and, and get rid of them if they're not good ideas or move forward. But it, it's something I can kind of control the design of and I can control how it's being applied. All right. So the other thing that was a big change, right, since 2013 is I started doing a lot more video on YouTube and I've kind of in the process of trying to integrate video better with the blog and integrate my blog better with YouTube. And so one of the things I do quite a bit is I release a video on YouTube and I want to promote it and kind of cross promote it and have other information on the blog, but also have it viewable for the video. And so if I go to one of these articles that I know is a video, and I have a, a different variation of this now, but I'm lazy loading the video and I didn't want to be impacted, right, by loading YouTube stuff, like especially some of these pages have a lot of YouTube videos. And so people can kind of watch from the top. And so funny UX error, before that, what I had done was I actually created a giant, look like a giant play button as a featured image. And I thought, this is great. I'll create this really beautiful image that'll be the featured image for all my videos. And I'll tell you, I, I was going through and testing this and I watched back and what did every single person, like I believe it was over 70% of the people that went to my site, they went there and were clicking on this featured image, really frustrated and then they would leave. And it's like my fault, right? And I think that's the thing, you can get really focused, like you're blogging and writing, you're not thinking about that. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna make this thing that looks like a video. But instead I made something that looked like they could play it, but in fact they couldn't. So when I changed it so they actually could, I really solved the problem in a big way. All right. So I'm basically checking to see if 
there's a video, and if there is a video on YouTube, it basically goes and lazy loads that, right? And, and it's the same kind of thing, very simple logic, right? I'm checking sometimes if there's multiple things. It's just simple conditional statements. And then let's see here. I also have a disclaimer for affiliates, which is if you're blogging is super important. It's a very lengthy disclaimer that you have to have. Um, the highlights. And here we go. And so one thing with foundation, because it's a uh, responsive framework and it's using basically left floats, right? With like a clear fix in the row to clear everything is I have to make sure everything's in a row because if I don't clear it, then things are gonna stack because they're different heights. So I end up doing this kind of weird thing with Ruby where I like split them up into different types of, you know, arrays and then process them separately so I can get those clean rows. So kind of for me, the direction that I'm going with my blog is I want to have more interactivity. And I think your middleman provides like a really solid tool for that. So what I'm working on right now is like an Angular version of the site where I have more interactivity. I'm getting rid of jQuery and I'm actually creating kind of like a premium membership version of the site that I'm connecting through Firebase. And it's, it's really easy because if you want to access all of your article data, you can actually just dump that all into a JSON file and generate it on the fly and then load it up async, right, through Angular or jQuery or anything like that. So you're not really limited just to like generating backend style code, right, for your blog. You can really do some pretty powerful things as well. So I think that's a lot of what I have. I mean, it's just a blog. It's not, uh, not rocket science here, but I found middleman to be kind of like a really good tool for that. I think the other side for me of what I use middleman for is I use it for creating rapid prototypes um, and also kind of clickable prototypes for clients. And I've found it to also to be really good for that because I can use partials and headers and footers and be able to kind of generate uh, a website of any style and keep it separated and keep it really clean and neat. But I think for me, it's been a much better process than WordPress and the performance is phenomenally better because I have a lot of control over it and there's no way I could host like a WordPress site that would be so fast. I think, um, so the other thing I do a lot is testing like front end performance. Typically what I see with most WordPress sites and sometimes people ask me for advice about this type of thing but they'll take forever to load, maybe 10, 15 seconds. It's really crazy. And a lot of it comes from having tons of plugins and a lack of optimization, but it's a little bit difficult to get things streamlined in WordPress, especially if you have a really large blog with like a lot of images and a lot of content. There's not like really a tool that you can run in a batch to very quickly do that. And so, I mean, what I'm ending up with here Instead of like with WordPress and having all of these CSS files being loaded and maybe it's going to load, I don't know, jQuery UI or something else that's pretty heavyweight or maybe multiple versions of jQuery. And, you know, like I said, 100, it can be 100, 150 connections, right? Even just the script files. I end up with like a single JavaScript file that I have a lot of control over. I can add libraries. I can move the order in which they're loaded. I can even have more control and, and be really specific on like a per page basis. And, you know, I can do all that with middleman. Like I, I just can't imagine like being able to have that refined control with WordPress. The other thing I hear a lot, like what I think from my clients, the number one thing I hear about WordPress, and I don't usually recommend it, <laughs> but the number one thing they say is, I, I'm worried I'm gonna get hacked. And I think that was one of the big benefits for me too, if we come full circle back, right? Thinking about like hacker news, that's probably like the number one thing I would be afraid of getting my WordPress site hacked. And I think with a static site, you know, if you're tying into data, of course you have to be careful there, but the static files themselves 
like there's not only so much you're going to be able to do with a static file, and I think it's a lot less vulnerable than WordPress, and you don't have to keep updating it all the time. Like obviously, we just went back in time, and I just generated my old site, right? Like that's pretty powerful. I don't think that I would be able to do that in WordPress very easily. Awesome. What do you use for content editing? Just the text editor? Do we have some markdown editor you like? Or? Yeah. So um, for text editing, what tool did I like? So I pretty much do everything in a tool called Ulysses 3. Has, ever, has anyone heard of that? Um, so maybe I'm a little bit of a hybrid. I do have a degree in the humanities, but um, it's actually a pretty neat tool. Has anyone ever heard of like Scrivener? All right. So basically it's a markdown editor. But what you can do is you can create multiple files and you can start writing in a non-linear way, right? So like topic one, you know, topic two, topic three, whatever. And I mean, often as I'm going farther, I usually end up with an outline before I'm writing. I'm not just kind of free writing. I mean, that's still an approach that I use, but I don't tend to free write my blog articles anymore, the other things I'm writing. I start with an outline. And so then what's nice is you can go in here and start splitting these up. Um, let's see here, split here. And it basically is creating different files and then you can kind of reorganize them. So I could like start at the conclusion. I could start at like a different topic. I don't have to write it in order. And it seems like for a blog article that this isn't useful, but I've written a book and I write almost every chapter in this. And sometimes the chapters are like 45 and 50 pages which is terrible, right? So if you're trying to edit a 50 page document in Microsoft Word, which is the desired output, right, for my publisher, that's terrible. So I always start here, because I can get that flow, I can get things to make more sense, I can put all my code samples, and I understand Markdown really well. And so then I take that into Word and kind of modify it. But the nice thing here, like you can go and export this into any kind of format. And you can do, it does some fancier things like linking and creating, like if you have a big list, you can create a bulleted list very quickly. But um, I think the big thing is like, I work here and you'll see like I have a ton of stuff, right? I have like my swipe files and this kind of stuff, um, different ideas that I have. And so I kind of keep all of my stuff in here about writing and then I do my longer form and then also my blog articles. They all start here and this is like the rough draft. And then usually it's sublime text or something like that afterwards. But yeah, I think uh, Middleman in general, like is an open source project, I think it's pretty good. It's active and they have really good documentation. So, you know, often some open source uh, projects, you're just kind of thrown to the wolves or like you got to read the source to figure things out. And I, I think it's, you know, much, much better than that. They have very extensive documentation. They have a lot of examples. And so, um, it's only kind of like really nitpicky things, uh, little details of a blog. There are things that I had to kind of really research to figure out. So I would love, I mean, just in general, if it's going to continue to be a blogging platform, I'd like to see more tools or methods um, that apply more to blogging, like the tools of a blogger, so to speak. Th that's what I would like to see, but not in a way where it creates a lot of bloat, but in a way that you can easily use them or at least easily know how you can include things like that. So thanks again for, uh, for coming and, and talking. Thanks to Vikia for hosting this. And uh, thanks to you all for coming. And um, hope to see you again the 26th of October. That's in what, three and a half weeks, something like that. And uh, that's going to be all about Jekyll and the launch of Jekyll 3.0. And the prime maintainer, uh, Pagamo, will be here. So uh, hope to see you all then. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>